In the swamps and cities of southern Louisiana, four post-apocalyptic survivors blaze a trail to find themselves, their adversaries, and the solution to stopping the second coming of the apocalypse. Welcome to Rad Rolls, a Fallout tabletop RPG. been about three days uh, since this group defeated the golf course. Hang on, my nose is absolutely full shot. <laughs> we, de- we defeated the okay. golf course? I'm that trying course? my best. We I'm slayed the masters. <laughs> Reading is hard. I have to read the, the, Reading the is snowy essential. day. And Dolly Parton sends me books every month for my <laughs> child. I'd read Llama Llama Pajama. Try reading yeah. upside down all the time. That's hard. Um, See, we okay. signed up for the for the Jewish book service too. They pay free books. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that was a thing. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the Dolly Parton thing. Yeah, so I mean, when you want to, you got tired of reading left to right. You want to read right to left. No, it's really just about like you know <laughs> Hanukkah stuff. I guess I don't really know. I haven't the kids don't really like them. So I actually, end up reading them. Just a little bit sad, actually. They're kosher when your child inevitably like just yeah. <laughs> chewing on the board books. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Uh, so <laughs> it's been about three days since this group departed the golf course, and about two days since the group departed the Christmas Town Settlement. All are now playing the clones of your characters that we haven't seen in quite a while. Paladin Buffant has ordered a large detachment of the Hood of Steel soldiers, along with Buck, established a foothold in several key locations to monitor the coast scavenge technology. Lonnie Haybear, Pep, Hazel, and Clark are now assigned to help Paladin Buffant on a critical mission. He has outfitted you all with new armor and confiscated your previous weapons in exchange for high-quality Brotherhood of Steel issue weapons, which you can now see in your character sheets, very bottom. The four of you are sitting on a vertibird mid-flight, the propellers whipping outside of the door as you hold on to the handlebars that are above you. With you in this flying machine is, of course, Paladin Buffant, with two Brotherhood of Steel initiates in the cockpit seats. Paladin Buffant reaches towards the door handle in his full T-60 power armor suit and flings it open. The night air fills the room as the green glow of a rad storm fills the cabin. Lightning strikes down across the lowlands as Paladin Buffant turns towards the group and asks, What's the most dangerous thing you've done? I mean, probably had something to do with uh, uh, telling one of my previous uh, 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 mommies the, uh, uh, the to, to kiss my ass like that. That was uh, um, that was probably pretty scary. Anybody else? Uh, well, you know. Did fire a mini nuke at a behemoth's face one time. Just pissed it off, though. That's a very similar to experience what I was uh, talking about. Like, I, I think I would have rather handled the nuclear ordnance than. Yeah, that's. Pep, what scared you? What? What? Uh, I, don't, I don't think anything uh, scared you. Like. Maybe like running out of gas, right? Like running out of uh, running out of petrol. That's a yeah. Um, is it is it unfair to say like right now being like the scariest? This seems kind of scary right now. Yeah, it's 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 pretty wild. But I I think uh, Paladin Buffon was talking like past tense. So, um, uh, yeah. Let's just say let's just say uh, like 
uh, r running out of fuel on the on the road. We'll we'll say that. Yeah, yeah. that'd be scary yeah. for you, Pep. I, wow. It's, okay. Really scary. May. May. Any spooks? Hazel. Um, spooks. Yeah. Uh, performing surgery in the dark with a hatchet. Mm -hmm. Are you, Are you sure that was surgery? Uh. Well. Uh. Yeah, it was as close to surgery as we were going to get. The, the leg had to come off, so, you know. Yeah, sometimes oh. it does. Sometimes it really does. Is, is amputation surgery? I mean, it's a medical procedure, right? But, like, is it? Well, it, it could have gone worse. At least it wasn't my leg. Oh. I mean, so when, when you all were, were in these situations... Um, you feel like your life was in danger? Oh, yeah. I ran Yeah, like dude, I almost coward. fucking died. Our lives I mean, are always in danger. Truthfully, I... I envy that. I think danger follows me. But for some reason, I've always endured, you know. If I think about it, Nothing really scares me anymore. I wish something did, you know, that thing that I'm envious of is, is that rush. Rush when it comes to fear. Oh, dude, We're in that moment. If, uh, if, if lightning hit this vertebrate and we started to go down, do you think that might, that might get those juices flowing? I don't know, Lonnie. Like a full on I wish it doll, did. flaming engines, screaming like just, um, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. Sorry, sir. If it did, if that made me feel something, that made me get the rush. I mean, that would be, that would be the ticket. But Lonnie, truthfully, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what what could possibly make me feel alive again. Feels have like I've been sleeping. Have you ever considered a nemesis? Like, yeah, uh, like someone of uh, equal or greater strength that you know is doing everything in their power to make your life miserable and yeah, like an arch enemy. And I like think... it's now your life's mission to you know take them down but because your brotherhood of steel you have to take the moral high ground so you can't just like kill them so they get away on occasion and you know you, uh... I mean some some have, have tried to to get up to that that level I think you're talking about but I don't stand away from a challenge have you considered the warm caress of a lover I mean, truthfully, Lonnie, lovers die. Nothing Have is you permanent. Ever, boy, that's a buzz kill. I'm sorry, sir. I'm wow. Well, you you could take a lover, and then if someone kills your lover, then you have a nemesis, and then you get the best of, both, best, of, best of both worlds. The two for one special. Yeah. I guarantee you'll feel something then. Then yeah, if I kill the nemesis. And my lover dies one day. What do I have left? Uh, have you tried uh, depression? Maybe a have dog. You have you tried really nice hair products and trying to keep? You know, you're not going to have hair as nice as this, but you could try. Clark, that's the, what the, keeps me going. The the helmet. I I don't know if there's anything strong enough. That's something that a lot of the initiates have complained about. Uh, uh, it's hard to coif that do when you've got to wear like this the standard like um helmets and stuff it's um, look the man is looking for a challenge in life uh, he's looking to feel something i mean oh you feel something ever tried electrotherapy at this point the vertebrate is is flying uh flying above kind of circling an area um, Paladin Buffon is kind of looking out the window wistfully into the night air, listening to them talk about trying different hairstyles and electrotherapy. And um, he says to the group, 
Uh, looks like we're coming up on the silo. He reaches into the overhead compartment and picks out uh, four. Um, there's four of you. Four stealth boys. Um, shiny red bag. He then proceeds to hand you all a stealth boy. All right. The mission is to secure the silo. Now, I'll warn you, you may not know what's attracted to the silo, so it's imperative that we get it under control and clear its contents. If the vert's close to the ground, go ahead and drop and kick your stealth boys on. We're going to be fully convert here. I don't want them seeing hotter hair of you. You're going to be coming down the ground, coming hot. Uh, once we're off, there might be some resistance, but uh, otherwise, I'll clean the landing zone and meet you at the door. Any questions? Uh, uh, how long do the stealth boys last? I mean, I'm expecting this mission to take uh, anywhere from, I mean, I would assume 10 minutes at tops. Okay. Okay. We're either going to die in those 10 minutes, which God, I hope so, or we're going to get through it. Sound good? Except for the dying thing. Sure. Did you? Sir, do you long for the sweet embrace of death? I wish something. Something would be a match for me, Lonnie Haber. You heard me. I wish something would match me. Uh, if we pull this off, do we get a bonus? I tell you what, if you pull this off, we'll go back to the armor. You can take whatever you want. I don't care. Okay. Wow. I'm... Yes, sir. Uh, the vertebrate begins circling a, a small, unusual plateau. As Paladin Buffant, the vertebrate is still in the air, <laughs> leaps from the door into the sky below. He pulls out a shish kebab sword and ignites it, falls towards a tree, and rends the flaming sword into the wood and the brush to slow his fall. Flames spew among the trees, igniting a small fire and smoke that the vertebrate ignores. He proceeds to a small clearing. Paladin Buffant is terrorizing and decimating several small black creatures with illuminated dots across their skin that seem to leap from the ground below. His fire sword burns their flesh and rips them in half, leaving a black goo along with traces of that bioluminescent glow. Vertibird lands as Paladin Buffant, covered in burnt goo from his helmet to his legs, motions at the uh, the stealth boy that he is also carrying and points at you all. You all are now on the vertebrate. What are you all gonna do? God, you're you're man, a, you're at so ground cool. like you're at ground level. Uh, follow orders. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. Folks, yeah. Let's hop to assholes and elbows. Uh, the paladin heads to a large concrete door. <laughs> He finds a small square terminal and reaches into uh, his red bag. Inside this bag is a human arm attached to a hand. He slaps it against the square terminal. It flashes green and the giant doors screech and wail open. Alden yells, Tunnelers! And the dark corridor is quickly illuminated by a small blue by small blue bioluminescent lights. Try saying bioluminescent ten times fast. Ten tunnelers begin racing towards the four of you. Uh, Paladin Buffant has not activated his stealth boy and is in front. You all, if you've activated your stealth boy, are fully cloaked. Did you all activate your stealth boys? Did yeah. he tell us to? He did tell he us. Pointed he pointed did indicate. Indicate. Yes, I'm a yeah. good, okay, good knight soldier and follow orders. All right, so you all are fully, you are all not in combat because these things have not engaged you. Um, what, what are you all going to be doing? Hug the wall and sneak. So you're not, you're not returning fire. You're not doing anything. You're just kind of like sneaking by. If I, uh, I mean, he seems like he's Paladin got this. Paladin did not yeah. want them to see hide nor hair of us. Mm -hmm. He said so, covert. He was very yeah. explicit. Yeah, I mean. Except for him, though. I mean, he was pretty uh, conspicuous. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the man's lost it. He he wants to lose. I don't know what he wants. He's... Yeah, it's a 
not exactly installing you with a lot of um, <clears throat> is is there is there room to sneak past or are they like 10 wide across are we going to have to vault these motherfuckers or can we just kind of sneak on through hmm. um you see that paladin buffon is like starting to like begin his shish kebab symphony and is just like laying into this kind as like a almost like a fiery meat grinder just absolutely tearing back and forth across um this uh the kind of swathe of of tunnelers that are right in front of him um it, it looks like some are like it's almost like two of them are getting past him and they're coming towards you all but they do not see you all so they're just like going are you all gonna do anything nope he seems to have this well in hand mm -hmm. he's uh as fun as it looks he's there was himself. the promise of whatever gun i want from the armory and yeah. that yeah So you're you're just like sitting there not doing anything. It's fun. Proceed as it looks, down yes. the proceed down the hallway. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what happens is let's go ahead and mark that. So Paladin Buffon manages to uh, to slice through at least five of these tunnelers. The two that go past you as he like holds his sword in the other hand. He actually pulls out his his laser rifle and uh, shoots it uh, twice at the tunnelers that are that are getting past him, and they fall to the floor a hundred percent dead. Um, now that everything is clear, let's see. The paladin turns around and he says, "All right, are y'all still there?" Yes. I mean, you, what? you You don't have to whisper. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to, you can whisper, but I I think that we've made it very clear we're here. I've shot a I've shot like military grade laser rifles and sliced things open with a flaming sword. I think that they know that we're here. I was informed to be covert for a bonus. This is whatever. All right. Um, the Paladin uh, marches forth into the facility more. Uh, and he comes to a corridor. Um, in this corridor, it's dark except for a single side of doors, uh, which he then enters and motions for you all to enter as well. Do you all do anything as you're going in, or are you going to just like go in and follow him immediately? I've got a. Uh, is is there like drawn. another hallway? Is there like another hallway that we were going down? You can pretty much see uh, there's a map included on roll 20 uh, of the yeah. silo. Um, there's so, large so you, siloed doors. Yep. So you're saying he went down this it. hallway to like the left or is he just like proceeding through this main door? He went through the uh, the hallway down to the left. Essentially, that's a wall that's right there that's blocking off. Oh, the OK. So, I gotcha. didn't I didn't understand exactly what that was okay so there's i wanted to see like what was down that hallway but if it's just a wall um i think i can understand that there's a wall yeah. so no it's just i've got a gun drawn and as the kids say we'll be watching those corners uh pep is curious as about these creatures he's gonna like kind of lean down and kind of poke at one of the tunnelers because yeah this is a weird creature that he's never seen yeah before. do you do a perception plus a survival for difficulty. Um, uh, I would say three. All right. Oops. Perception plus survival. Oh, you got two successes. So I'm going to give you kind of a mixed result here. Okay. Um, you reach down uh, into this into this black goo, um, and you feel it um, actually 
like get onto you, um, and it burns up, and the the, uh, the armor that you're wearing on your right hand that you reached into to investigate this black dude with uh, is actually now broken. Um, no damage to you, but your your armor on your right hand is broken. Um, okay. You did discern that this is a very toxic substance um, that is also fairly acidic to the touch. Uh, they could cause um, uh, very serious wounds um, if anybody particularly went into uh, to grab onto this. Would you say they would create very deep wounds? <laughs> I said very serious wounds, but mm. some may call them a deep wound. Interesting. <laughs> so do I need to reflect the broken armor on my character sheet somewhere? I think you're fine. Nope. Okay. We're we're not gonna be here for that long, so okay. you do not. Fair enough. All right. Uh, so you all follow the paladin in. Um, inside is a command center that's full of computers that are still whirling and beeping. Strangely enough, the paladin exits his power armor. Uh, you notice his brotherhood jumpsuit is ripped on his right arm and on his back. Black goo seeps out of lacerations on his skin through these rips. He struggles to walk to a chair where a computer is. He begins typing, then reaches into his, into his bag, uh, that red bag, and pulls the hand out and puts it on a scanner. A small circular compartment opens. He turns toward the group and says, All right, y'all feel like getting promotions? Oh, does it come with a bonus? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, I think it's a pretty big bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And who wants to go sir? first? Yeah, fuck it. All right, uh, Clark, uh, he motions towards this circular port that you could stick your hand into. Do you do that? Can I make a perception check to see if it's just going to put off my hand? Uh, yeah, I'd say that... Well, I'm not even going to have you make a perception check. This thing has, like, no way that it could, like, Indiana Jones style, like, remove your hand via something. It, it may oh. affect you, but it's not going to remove your hand. Well, I mean, that still seems ominous. But if it doesn't seem like it's just going to immediately, like, kill me or disarm me. Is it, sure. is it one of those uh, Benny Gesserit, like, pain boxes or? <laughs> <laughs> but that would be good. That's a good note for next time. So maybe not this time, but maybe next time. <laughs> Mental note, maybe Benny Gesserit time. pain box. Fear is the mind killer. Maybe next time. That's in that's in the, the Dune Adventures of Imperium. Now from Modiphius. Yes, right I now. saw that. I'm, um, I'm, anyways, I'm, I'm... <laughs> uh, Clark, uh, you're sticking your hand in. Uh, I'm just telling you that you're going to do that. Uh, and a little needle comes out. It kind of draws blood for a second and then uh, says, congratulations, promotion for designation general. Uh, and Paladin Buffon motions to the rest of the group. It's like, all right, let's go ahead. You're all getting promoted to generals today. It, gener is that a normal Brotherhood of Steel rank? It, this is old technology. Uh, we got to be able to access this. This is the United States Army. Um, you know, we've defected from the United States Army. We I mean long, long time ago. But if we're going to be, be able to access this technology and protect it and use it for what we need, we're going to have to get everybody to the rank of general in order to access the systems. It can't okay, just so be me. So what's the equivalent in the Brotherhood of Steel? Of for a general? Um yeah. probably elder. Oh. So So will I become an elder if I put my hand in that? Hey, what the fuck am, are you talking I about? I mean I mean am I an elder? Like No, you're a paladin. I, I've already done this doing this for you all this so isn't you an elder paladin no he's a general how the paladin. ranks work you're this paladin is an old general. system this is an old system lonnie here i swear to god lonnie do you do you not understand sarcasm 
I don't no, think I he mean, does. like he promised a promotion. Like I take this very seriously. I'm sorry if you a contracted, you know, helper don't want to take this seriously. Like, what authority oh. does the U.S. Army have here? Like, oh, I. Honey, let me make this very clear to you. You ever needed a key to get into a door? I lived in Old Orleans. Like we, doors were. Kind I lived of there too. To you needed a key to get. You needed designation to get into certain areas. Do you think that on your first day we just let you walk into the Brotherhood Steel, let you walk right up to all the munitions and power armor we have, and just get right in? Like I don't know. Like you're somebody just like coming off the street, being trying to trick people to be like, oh, get Sir, your power armor off. Let me get right in. Sir, I understand what ranks are. I'm just trying to figure out what the equivalent of general is since we're getting a promotion. This is merely a key. The promotion itself is for the United States Army. So, yes, Lonnie, you would be the general in the United States Army. The United States Army is dead, though. So, right. So, like, that's that ain't that's pretty worthless then. All due respect, what, sir. It, it is. It is 100% worthless other than getting access to the systems that we need. And a and, bonus. And we need all five of us to do that. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. I put my hand in begrudgingly. Promised a promotion yeah. and then not get it. That's good. Um, okay. Everybody else put their hand in or is anybody staying out? Nope. I'll do it. Uh, Pep's going to slowly approach it and think really hard about which hand he's going to put in. Um, the one that already got burned with the gross blood acid from the monster, or the one that still has a little bit of armor on it. Uh, I, I understand this is a tough decision. Do you want your steering hand or your shifting hand? And I, I'd pro if I were you, I'd probably say your steering hand. Yeah, yeah. Let's, I'll put in, put in my still armored hand, my left hand. Great. Um, so everybody, uh, congratulations. You are now the rank of general in the United States Army. Uh, now, this facility hosts a payload of uh, three nuclear warheads mounted to missiles. Uh, Y'all know what those are, right? Y y yeah. Yes. Okay. No, no surprises. No, we're not. We're not freaking out. We're not having a. I just want to make sure nobody's freaking. We, we've just got three nuclear missiles here. Yep. Yep, that's the equivalent of like a hundred chrysalises. Everything's normal. So, uh, down here, the radiation's it's like it seemed to have been leaking out. It's attracting these uh, underground tunnelers. You know, the, the things that I had to fight the whole way in here. Um, I don't know if... Has anybody seen what they do to you? <laughs> Pep's going to raise his, his right hand. Yeah, uh, um... Yeah, I, I've, oh, son, I've seen. Oh, son, son. You, you touched one? I was just curious. I've never seen one of those before. Christ. Oh, my God. It All looks right. like well, you touched well, one, too. Or got touched by one or a couple. Uh, sir, do you require uh, medical attention? I've had the doctors look at it. They said that the, there's nothing they can do. And I feel fine otherwise, but... Uh, what's stopping me? If it kills me, so be it. Uh, so, as you know, these tunnelers uh, leave incredibly painful wounds on the skin uh, that they're able to, to rend. Uh, these, these wounds cut deep. Uh, but based on pre-war intelligence and research, we found essentially two hives of these monsters that are deep underground. Uh, we've already cleared a depth charge into these. Now, my game plan, what the Brotherhood of Steel decided to do with these nuclear weapons is... Uh, Essentially, fire two nuclear weapons of the three into both sites that we've already done our clear breach charge into. Uh, and that would neutralize the threat itself. If the threat does still exist after we've already cleared out these hives, uh, then we can use the third one if necessary. Uh, but it, the thing is, if they still exist, the radiation will also cause them to swarm this location again. So, uh, the reason I had you all come uh, as generals is I'm actually going to give you uh, 
some special uh, remote launch codes uh, that could be entered from the uh, the power plant in Old Nolens to launch a nuke uh, anywhere that we would need. Uh, and if we don't need it, if it turns out that, that we've, we've solved the problem, uh, then we can just remotely detonate the nuclear weapon as well. No big deal. But I I brought the four of you all along because you all uh, have a wide scope of things. I don't know if I can trust my initiates or very many people in the Brotherhood right now, but I know that I can trust you all um, to have these nuclear codes, take them back to the power plant, and keep Old Nolan safe. By using nu- nuclear bombs? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be firing two right now, and then I'm going to give you the codes for the last one. And I, you don't have to do anything with it; just take it back to Old Nolan's at the power plant. So, you remember if those powers- stories about like the genie and the lamp, and you get three wishes, but instead of wishes, it's nuclear missiles, and really, there's only like one wish type of wish that the genie can grant. And we have to share the wishes. That's essentially really the only what thing I'm... in common is the number three. Now that I think about it, but yeah. Well, I mean, I, if you I had a genie you and you're making two one. wishes at the genie, and you 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 mess up the first two, you got the last one at least to fix everything. And that's what I'm that's what I'm counting on. And one of these days, I'm going to tell you the story of the monkey's paw. Uh, yeah. Um, so you're for sure launching two uh, nuclear weapons at, so is it nearby? Is it like near us? Uh, do you see your hand right there? Yeah. Do you want that happening to every single citizen of Southern Louisiana that is still living and breathing to this day? I mean, have, have you seen feral ghouls? Have you seen... Mutated monsters? I mean, we have I don't the know, medical, I don't know if we, we can make things facilities. worse. We have the medical facilities to treat all these things. We have chemicals to, to repair the body, but there's nothing that we have that's for any kind of scale to repair what these monsters are capable of. I think he means that we could make, might end up making more like ghouls and things with the more radiation from the new bombs. Yeah, Maybe Pal- we might make these guys worse. Y- yeah, Paladin also, hitting whatever. hitting something that was created by nuclear radiation with nuclear bombs, sometimes it, it might not work out the way you think it does. Now, okay, in, in the Paladin's defense here, this was like a slow trickle of radiation. And from what I've learned, if a little bit isn't enough, then you just really got to pour it on, right? Like you just, I mean. You, you... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in no way suggesting that we don't use the bombs. I am 100% yeah, in it, favor it sounds like of it using the nuclear armaments. Absolutely. That's on my bucket list. I mean. After, after the mini nuke and behemoth incident, using one of these. I mean, that's, I bet uh, that's that gonna check be... off a big one, guys. Yeah, that's uh. My thought yeah. is, we've already cleared the breach charge. We're not even concerned about the radiation, other than you know, top side. Tried to clear those areas best that we can. We'll see. I can't count any losses, but at least the fire from the missiles will burn everything underground. It'll be like a screaming inferno for everything that's living underneath there and we can't have that invading the city causing a bunch of trouble this isn't the best solution but i mean this is really this is the threat that we have see screaming inferno that was basically what paladin buffont was at the entrance a little while ago screaming inferno did a number of those things like i i i don't i don't see what the issue with launching just a couple of tactical nukes would be Okay. Yeah, I guess it'll be fun as long as we're sure there's no, you know, innocent bystander. Nobody's nobody's innocent. They're gonna die if if they're if if they're over in that area getting infected with black goop tunnel monsters, 
then like this is a mercy we're doing them a service the job well, it's just it, a job I'm, I'm really happy that you all agree with me in my in my uh my line of thinking though i don't really need you all to agree with me in my line of thinking because i'm just gonna do it anyway but it really i mean it really it warms the soul to know that, that you all can, can see my logic and what's going on here um and he uh types a few things in the computers and the facility starts starts rumbling and shaking um as the first nuke is launched um and it quiets down and then another rumbling and shaking as the other nuke is launched, um, Paladin Buffant gets up and gets back in his power armor as it seals shut. And he looks at you all and hands uh, Hazel the uh, the nuclear codes and says, you know, you seem like the one that was maybe most timid about this, so I think it's good to have somebody timid hold these for a while. Um, uh let's let's go back out we can go back out to the entrance we can all get on the vertebrae and go home how's that sound i think that sounds like a great idea all right so you all uh exit the uh the missile silo um you see two brotherhood of steel uh initiates kind of run up to paladin dance uh, and one of them kind of like jumps up on his armor whispers in his ear a little bit as the vertebrae starts like kicking up um the the other one that's went back in um, and is flying, starting to fly the vertebrate. And Paladin Buffon turns to you and he says, All right, unfortunately, there's been a change of plans. Uh, we've had another outbreak of these monsters. Um, and I really don't want to put you all in more danger. I don't have enough stealth boys for you all to get past it. So I'm going to ask you all to do the trek to New Orleans back on foot. Uh, I think I've cleared out most of the monsters here. So you shouldn't have that much issue other than, you know, just regular wildlife that you come across in the wasteland. But uh, I'm going to get with my two guys. I got to go rendezvous with uh, one of our operations. And I think there's some more monsters that I'll need to deal with. I think it's a low, uh, it's a small group. It's nothing like any of the hives. But we want to make sure to nip this in the bud before we uh, we do anything else. That sound all right with you all? As so long as you radio ahead about the whole whatever I want from the armory thing. It sounds like you have a have a important job to go do. All right, that sounds good. 10 to 4, and he hops onto the vertebrate as it flies away into the air. And that's the end of that scene. And now... Hazel, it's probably yeah. good you have the launch codes because I think any of the other three of us, like, we could get real petty about something and just, like, <laughs> drop a nuke on someone just for reason. I, I'm, uh, I, if I if Pep had been given the codes, he was going to destroy them. Okay. Like, he Hazel, is horrified. Hazel kind of just like the the coats are on a um, the coats are on a a hall. Or how how does she have the codes? They're just like uh, it's like a little computer. It's like a tiny computer that's like very small. All right, she um, tucks it in. She tucks it into her cleavage. Like, like all right. two factor authentication. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> usually like USB or whatever. Drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think uh, so. That's I think, where I think Clone Clark would have probably tried to sell them. Oh, okay. just where he the nuke. is in his Where's journey. Where's the nuke? Okay, so it's actually launch codes for the nuke. You don't think people would pay for launch codes for a fucking nuke? Oh yeah, there would be people who pay for launch codes. Oh yeah, that's the entire plot of the movie Radioactive Dreams. I don't know if you guys have seen that, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, it's, it's the, the Fallout movie before Fallout. Yeah.